All right, guys. So today we're going to be doing a little bit more of a uh, scientific type of video. What we're going to be doing is we are going to be testing a bunch of different batteries, and we're going to see which AA batteries are the best. I have eight AA batteries here, and obviously, as you can see, uh, eight fans. So the first test that we're going to be doing is we are going to simply just turn on these fans and see which batteries last the longest. I have the batteries. Uh, or I have the fans arranged from the cheapest batteries to the most expensive batteries. In theory, if you get what you pay for, they should die in this order. So let's talk about the batteries and let's go over some of the specs. So the first batteries that we have here are PowerMax batteries. They say they're an ultra alkaline, guaranteed for 10 years in storage. Other than that, there's really nothing, nothing special about them. The PowerMax were 21 cents per battery. And I also, I weighed all of the batteries. I don't know if the weight's actually gonna change or not, but just out of curiosity, I weighed them. PowerMax was 23 grams, and the starting voltage was 1.605 volts. Second in line here, we have the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt Magnum. Again, alkaline, reliable, long-lasting, and dependable. They don't really have any bold claims or anything. The Harbor Freight Thunderbolt Magnums are 27 cents a piece. They are also 23 grams, and they their starting voltage is 1.6 volts even. Next up, we have Amazon Basics. Of course, nothing fancy. They don't make any fancy claims. Just regular old batteries that come in plastic. So the Amazon Basics are 31 cents a piece, also 23 grams, and they were 1.628 volts starting. Next up, we have AC Delco batteries. These are a super alkaline whatever that means. They say that they last three times longer, but it doesn't say three times longer than what. So that's kind of a bold claim, three times longer. Also a 10 year shelf life. I think that's just kind of, kind of a standard shelf life, might be 10 years. So 33 cents per battery, again, 23 grams. And the starting voltage is 1.602 volts. Next, we have another pack of batteries that also came from Harbor Freight. I guess these are kind of more of like, not premium, but just a, a better version of their Thunderbolt batteries because they have the Thunderbolt Magnums. Then they also have the Thunderbolt Edge. No claims, really. It says that they last as long as the competition. So for the Thunderbolt Edge, they come in at 38 cents per battery. They are 24 grams, so they're one gram more than all the other batteries so far and their starting voltage is 1.589 volts. Next up, we have the old classic Duracell. I remember seeing these uh, commercials on these whenever I was a kid, and they said they were like the greatest things ever, or they lasted forever, and they're supposed to be the best, or you know, whatever. So the Duracells come in at 76 cents per battery, so quite a steep jump from the Harbor Freight ones. They're also 23 grams, uh, per battery, and their starting voltage is 1.594 volts. Next, we move on to the Energizer Max. I couldn't find just like regular Energizer. I don't know if that's a like not a thing anymore. Um, like I have the Mandela effect or something. I could have swore there used to be just regular Energizer and then Energizer Max, but maybe it's always been Energizer Max. I don't know. Uh, the package says they last 50% longer. 50% longer than what? I do not know. So for these, the Energizer Max, they come in at 83 cents per battery. They are also 24 grams, so they also have an extra gram. Don't know what that's gonna do. And then their starting voltage is 1.605 volts. And then, last but not least, we have our most expensive battery, the Energizer Ultimate Lithium. These batteries are crazy expensive compared to all the other ones. These batteries come in at $1.95 per battery. So more than double any, any other battery that we have. They weigh in at only 14 grams, you know, because they're lithium, but kind of interesting. And their starting voltage, they have the highest price and, they're start, and they also have the highest starting voltage. Their starting voltage is 1.789 volts. So you'd think that these are gonna last the longest, they're the most expensive, they have the highest starting voltage, they're lithium, they're supposed to be the greatest. I guess we'll see. So what we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna start all of these fans, and then I'll probably let them run for maybe an hour, maybe an hour, hour and a half, because I know they're all gonna run at least that long. And then I'll come back and check on them, and then we'll see what's going on, and depending on what's happened in the first like hour, hour and a half, 
Uh, I'll probably come back every 30 minutes and check on them periodically and just see what's going on. So let's go ahead and get these things started. Oh. Click that button. Why is the button not clicking? All of them are on. We'll come back in like an hour, hour and a half. We'll see what's going on. All right, guys. So before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by EcoFlow. EcoFlow, if you don't know, they make portable power stations. This one is the EcoFlow Max. This power station has 2,016 watt hours of capacity. You can also power things up to 2,400 watts with this. You can also sustain a surge of up to 5,000 watts. So that's just some of the specs and some of the things that it can do. So let's, let's take a look at this thing. First, we're gonna go to, to the back side over here. So this one has these two ports right here, that these are expansion ports. So you can actually, if you, if you require a lot of power, you can buy up to two expansion batteries for this thing. So you can triple your watt hours. Let's go to the front here, I'll show you what's on the front. So you can see here on the front that you have an LCD that shows you how many hours of battery life you have left, the percentage that the battery is charged, also your input and your output, how many watts you're how many watts are getting put in, so if you're charging, how many watts are getting pulled out. Four USB-A ports, two of which are fast charging. You have two USB-C ports. Both of these can also go up to 100 watts. And then for every port on the entire thing, you have these on and off switches so that you can run them all independently. And of course you have your power switch. And then for the back, it's also very simple. You have this little lid that flips up. You have this port right here, that this is the port for solar panels. You can charge up to 800 watts of solar through here, or you can your car charger plugs into here. There's also a switch right here for this. This is where you plug it in to charge it from the wall. And with this switch, you can do a slow charge or a custom charge, which we'll, we'll get into the custom charge here in a minute. So you can charge slow, or you can flip it up and charge fast, up to 1800 watts. You have your, just your reset. You have six 120 volt outlets, and then you have a cigarette outlet port right here where you can plug in, you know, whatever you want to plug in there. And then of course, all of these are separate, so you can run all of these independently of each other. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now let's talk about the EcoFlow app. I said earlier that you could pick how fast you wanted this thing to charge. That is in the app. So the app gives you a lot of good information. It tells you the how hot it is. It says it's 86 degrees. It uh, has like a little fuel gauge. It shows you I'm at 83% or 99 hours. It shows you your input or your output, just like the screen does. It has X boost, which will allow you to use a device that draws a larger amount of power than normal, like a hair dryer or something. So you can see that the app gives you a ton of useful information. You can see how hot the battery is. Mine's 86 degrees. You can see how many hours it has left, just like you can on the screen, 99 hours, 83% battery. You can see your inputs and your outputs, just like, just like you can on the screen. And then you can also, something really cool that I like, is that you can control all of the outlets from your, from your phone. So say like I'm going to turn on the uh, front out, the front USB ports. So we'll push it here, and you can see the little light right here turned on, and I'll turn it off, and that turns off. So that gives you a really cool way to control your devices. You can also go into the settings, and there's a lot of cool settings that you can do. You can set the discharge level, the discharge and charge level. So like I have mine set to where it won't go to completely to zero, it'll only go to 10%. You can set it to where it'll charge, you know, say if you only want it to charge up to 80 or 90% for some reason, you can set that. You can set your AC charge speed, so when you plug it into the wall, you can see how long, you can pick how many watts you want it to charge with. So I have mine set at 200, but you can go all the way up to 1800. And then there's just a couple other different features, like you can turn the beep on and off and just other little things like that. So now that I've gone over all the specs, let's just do some tests and let's see what we can power. So first, I'm sure this is gonna be absolutely no shock to anybody. We'll plug in a cell phone. Oh, we gotta turn this on. Yeah, you can see it's pulling 15 watts. No big deal. I can charge my phone for uh, 71 hours. Now let's go ahead, let's push this thing to the max. We're gonna plug in a space heater. And then on top of that, let's plug in a heat gun. Two things that draw a ton of power. And this should be probably somewhere around 2,400 watts. Yeah, you can see almost 2,400 watts there. 
So you can see that it can power some pretty, uh, pretty heavy duty things. So let's see what else this thing can handle. So let's say that you were on like a job site and you needed some power. Could it power, say, a saw? I think the answer is gonna be yes. Yeah, no surprise, it can power us all. Let's say you were uh, camping or maybe you were just home and the power was out and you had a pizza cooker and you wanted to cook a pizza. Could you do that? Yeah, you could. And it's only pulling like 1200 watts. So theoret theoretically, if it's only going to pull 1200 watts, you could cook two pizzas at the same time with this thing. So that's pretty cool. So it's pretty obvious that this thing is a powerhouse and it'll power pretty much any appliance that you need to power. So whether you are just trying to be maybe more prepared for a power outage, maybe you go camping a lot. So whatever the case may be, this thing is a great addition to have around the house. So if you're interested in one of these and you want to check them out, there is a link in the description. You can click that link and you can go check one of these out for yourself. All right, so we're coming up on about three hours, and uh, I know that some of these fans, I noticed that some of these fans look a little bit weird in the camera, almost like they're, some of them look like they're going slower than others, but uh, I can assure you that in person, not a single one of these fans looks like they're slowing down at all. Um, if I really, really pay attention, it almost looks like this one, the uh, Thunderbolt one, might be slowing down ever so slightly but i mean so far everything is still going strong we're about to hit three hours um we'll come i'll come back in maybe another 30 minutes or an hour somewhere around the four hour mark and uh we'll see if anything's starting to slow down all right so it's been almost three and a half hours and just like i said in the last update they're all still going strong except for this one this Harbor Freight uh, Magnum, yeah, the Thunderbolt uh, Magnum is definitely starting to slow down. I think about another maybe 30 minutes to an hour or so, I think it's going to finally kick the bucket. Um, but other than that, everything's going strong. It looks like maybe the Power Max could be the next one to start slowing down. It's a little hard to tell, but the rest of these from here forward, they're all going the exact same and they look like they're not slowing down anytime soon. All right, it's only been about 15 minutes since the last update and this uh, Thunderbolt Magnum is getting ready to die any second now, I would assume. It's really, really starting to slow down and I'm also starting to see this one the AC Delco is starting to slow down, and the Power Max is starting to slow down. I think we're gonna have three of them stop uh, really close together. Oh, oh, <laughs> it slowed down for a second. It's gonna, it has, it has to die any second now. It's like it like gets a second wind or something. It's literally just about to die, and I don't think this one's gonna be very far behind it. Oh, here we go. Come on. All right. Time. Right there. All right, so the Thunderbolt Magnum is the first battery that is officially out. So, kind of surprising. I figured the Power Max would be first. So, Thunderbolt's out first. And I would assume that uh, AC Delco is probably going to be next because it looks like it's slowing down. So, just as I had predicted, this one is going to be the next, the, the next one to die. It actually might stop any second now. It feels like it's getting really, really close. I thought it's doing the same thing that this one did. It kind of like gets, st slows down and then it kind of like picks up for a second. It's going to die any second now. Come on, this thing is going to, this thing is going to spin like this forever, I bet. Come on, just go ahead and stop. There you go. There we go. All right. Right there. So AC Delco is now out. The rest of these, surprisingly, these four right here, I think are going to go for quite a while. These two right here look like they're slowing down at 
approximately at the same rate. I think these two are going to be very, very close. Although I do think the Power Max is probably going to be the next one to go. But I think both of these are going to be, the Power Max and the Amazon, I think are going to be very, very, very close. Alright, so we are at, give or take, the five hour mark. And the Power Max is about to die. We're actually, we're actually probably right, right at the five hour mark. I don't have like an exact time. But this is, this is going to die any second now. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make my predictions. I think... Of course, this is going to die next, and then the Amazon, and then Duracell, and then the Thunderbolt Edge, and then Energizer, and then the Energizer Lithium. I think that is the exact order that it's going to go in. I hate this part of the test, how <laughs> this, this last little tiny little bit of life that they have in them just seems to last forever and ever, like, come on, just... Just give up. There you go. All right. Now the power max is out. Yeah, I think it's a solid guess. I think Amazon's gonna be next. So we're at uh, about five and a half hours, and something unsuspected is starting to happen. The Duracell is starting to slow down significantly, but the Amazon seems to. It might have slowed down a tiny bit, but it's still going pretty much just as fast as it was the last time we checked in. I really think that there is a strong possibility that the Duracell will be the next one to stop. So that kind of, that's kind of crazy because it was going so strong. So in about 10 minutes or so, I'd say this Duracell is going to be done. And just like I suspected, the Duracell is about to stop just any second. While well, the Amazon still goes strong, and then the Energizer and the Energizer Lithium even stronger than that. Oh, and uh, the Thunderbolt Edge. It's still go it's going stronger than the Amazon. Oh, this is going to do that same thing they all do. They sit there and spin at 3 RPMs for like 20 minutes. There you go. Alright. Duracell is out. I mean, it's going to be between, between Amazon and the Thunderbolt. I think Amazon's going to be next. Alright, so it's only been about five minutes and since the uh, Duracell died, and then now all of a sudden the lithium is starting to die, and it doesn't seem to have that, uh, that like, slight uh, down curve or whatever that, like, all these other ones have, how they, like, the Amazon one, how they, they start to slow down and they get slower and slower and then they stop. This one seems to just, like, be, be dying extremely fast because it was just spinning at, like, full speed, like, five minutes ago, and now it's almost stopped. I'm assuming it's finally going to last like another maybe three, four minutes and then it'll be dead. So, it must be just something with lithium. Okay, there we go. Finally. Amazon is probably going to be the one that quits first. I don't know. And then we'll see. We'll see between these two. No, oh, look at that. Perfect timing. Just a little bit, six, just a little over six and a half hours in. And the Amazon just quit. Uh, so now we're just down. We're just down to, ironically enough, the Harbor Freight. I honestly didn't think that either one of those Harbor Freight batteries were going to be really worth anything. This one is proving is proving to be very good. The other one's kind of trash. So now we're just down to the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt and the uh, regular Energizer. And honestly, I know it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but whenever I stand here and I look at both of these fans. I think the Harbor Freight's gonna win because I think the Energizer looks like it's starting to slow down a little bit. So I really, th I really think the Harbor Freight is gonna win. That's gonna be crazy if that's the case. All right, it's pretty safe to say that the uh, Harbor Freight Thunderbolt Edge is gonna be our winner. The Energizer hasn't given up yet, but it's very close. It's much closer than the Thunderbolt. So I guess we're just gonna kind of sit here and just wait for this thing to die so that we can declare. The Thunderbolt, our winner, this is literally going to last forever. This thing is never going to stop. No, oh, so, so, so I walk away for two seconds, and that's when you decide to stop. Energizer is out. We can officially declare the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt Edge the winner. 
We're gonna let this one continue to, to uh, run just so we can see how far or how much more it, or how much I'm, I'm going crazy being in here for seven hours. We're gonna keep, we're gonna let this one run so that we can see how much farther or how much longer it runs compared to all the other ones. That's what we're gonna do. All right, so after almost seven hours, this one is finally almost dead. It should be taking its last spin any second now. Okay, finally, the test is complete. So I'm gonna go back and get the official times for all of them, get all the voltages and all that good stuff, and we'll come right back. All right, the numbers are in. I've done my calculations. Now, before we talk about these numbers, I know that I weighed the batteries in the beginning because I, for some reason, thought that the batteries would get lighter as they were used. They did not. All of the weights stayed the exact same. Just know that. We're gonna start from the bottom of the list and we're gonna work our way to the top of the list. The bottom of the list, the Thunderbolt Magnum, it ran for a total of three hours, 35 minutes, and 46 seconds. The finishing voltage was 1.163 volts. And then also for each of these batteries, I did a calculation of how much it cost to run them per hour. So the Thunderbolt Magnum was 0.0753. So seven and a half cents or so to run that battery. Next, we got the AC Delco. It, had, it ran for three hours, 58 minutes and 21 seconds. It had a finishing voltage of 1.103. And it cost 0.0831, a little bit more expensive. Next, we got the Power Max. The Power Max was our cheapest battery. Five hours, five minutes, and 46 seconds. It had a finishing voltage of 1.214, price per hour of 0.0413. Next, we have Duracell. Duracell ran for five hours, 41 minutes, and 12 seconds. It had a finishing voltage of 1.162, and it cost 0.1337. So 13 cents per hour to run that battery. That's pretty crazy considering that the rest of these, at least the good ones are roughly four cents-ish. Next on our list, the really crazy one is the Energizer Lithium. For one, it was our most expensive battery, $1.95 per battery. It only ran five hours, 56 minutes, and 34 seconds. It, has a, it had a finishing voltage of 0.369, which I would also like to point out that it had the highest starting voltage and the lowest ending voltage. It had a starting voltage of 1.789, so almost 1.8 volts, and it finished at 0.369. So I don't know if that's just like a lithium thing or what, but that was kind of kind of surprising. And then it comes in at a, a whopping 3286 to run per hour. So almost 33 cents per hour to run an Energizer Lithium and it's not even the best. That kind of blew me away whenever I did that calculation. Almost 33 cents per hour. Next up on the list, we have Amazon. Ran for six hours, 33 minutes, and 52 seconds. It had a finishing voltage of 1.216, and it cost 0.0473 to run per hour. So almost five cents, it's not bad. Next, we have Energizer Max. Runtime of six hours, 59 minutes, and nine seconds. It had a finishing voltage of 1.105, and it had a cost per hour of 0.1188. Almost 12 cents per hour. It's a little, little on the high end, if you ask me, compared to these other options that you have. And then we have our winner, the Thunderbolt Edge. The Thunderbolt Edge ran seven hours, 47 minutes, and 49 seconds. It had a finishing voltage of 1.138, cost per hour of 0.0488. I'm really impressed with that. Something, uh, something I'd like to note that I think is very um, strange is that the battery that is at the bottom of the list and the battery that is on the top of the list both came from Harbor Freight. And they only have a nine cent price difference. That extra nine cents will get you almost an extra four hours of runtime. I don't know how you are simultaneously on the bottom of the list and the top of the list. That doesn't make sense. It seems like Harbor Freight should just uh, ditch the Thunderbolt Magnums and keep the Thunderbolt Edges because the Thunderbolt Edge is so much better. I don't know, I thought that was weird. So let's move on to the next test. All right, so for our next test, it is going to work something like this. I have eight flashlights that I will go ahead and turn on. Uh, I don't wanna blind you guys. Maybe we'll put them Maybe we'll just put them face down. I have, I bought this uh, light meter 
And what it does is it will show us how much light these flashlights are putting off in lux. So what we're gonna do is every, I'm gonna check them, you know, right now at the beginning, and then every 30, we're gonna let these flashlights run, and every 30 minutes, we're gonna check them all and see how much light each one is putting out. And then I'll be able to put all those points on a graph, and then we'll be able to see, I guess, like the power curve or whatever of the batteries, see if maybe some of them stay pretty consistent for a long time and then drop off, see if maybe some of them just are a consistent downfall from the beginning. You know, we'll just be able to see how they act. So this thing is just really simple. We're gonna take the Power Max, you just shine it on this thing, and we can see that we're getting about 810 lux. All right, so here's what's going on. We all know that uh, from time to time, sometimes I talk a little bit too much and maybe uh, drag a little thing, drag some stuff out a little bit too long. And that's pretty much what happened with this video. The testing, showing each light being tested on the tester repetitively over and over and over added like an extra 25 minutes to the video. So we're not going to, I'm not going to make you suffer through all of that and watch me ramble on about nonsense for that long. So what I'm going to do is we are just going to cut straight to the chase. And I'm just going to show you all of the numbers and show you all the data. So our first order of business is to get rid of this background picture and find something that is more beautiful to look at. All right. I think this will do perfectly. So up first we have power max and we already saw that power max started off at 810. And also just something to keep in mind, I'm going to put the number of minutes that we checked each one at the top of the picture, because I know I said that I checked them every 30 minutes, but towards the end of the video, I started checking them. Some, I started checking some of them a little bit more often just because the batteries were dying so fast that it was going to make my graph be like such a drop off. And I wanted like a gradual decline for my graph that you will see later. So the power max started off at 810 and then went to 636, then 578, then 460, then 370, then 276, and then 246, and then zero. Next we have Thunderbolt Magnum, following a very similar pattern to the Power Max. It started off at 904, 745, 685, 636, 510, and 331, and then zero. Next up we have Amazon Basics. They started off at 950, and then 748, 696, 619, 512, 402, and 228, then zero. Next up, AC Doco. Started off at 884, 657, 660, 621, 530, 366, 269, and then zero. Now we have the Thunderbolt Edge, which was the winner of the fan test. They started off at 1015, 828, 776, 720, 562, 420, 342, 300, 255, 246, 123, and then zero. Next we have Duracell, or should I say disappointment cell. I don't know why I don't have a picture for the very first reading, but the first reading was 971, then 756, 686, 620, 513, 437, 350, 170, 54, 19, and then zero. Energizer Max started off at 998, 852, 792, 728, 655, 514, 374, 260, 93, 52, 33, 19, and then zero. So last but not least is the Energizer Lithium. Now I don't have pictures of every single reading like I do for the other ones because in the original video, I didn't actually film every single reading because it was just getting even longer than it was to begin with. So I will show you what I do have, and then we'll go over the data. So this Energizer Lithium actually has some impressive readings. Started off at 948, and then went to 943, and then 943 again, and then 923, and then 899, 875, 842, 809, 786, 784, 723, 677, 610, and then the readings that I don't have pictures for are 480, 316, 228, 98, and then zero. And it was our winner with a total runtime of 320 minutes. Uh, I also made a chart that you guys will see somewhere at some point. The uh, You can see that pretty much every single one of these batteries followed the exact same pattern, and that is 
They started high and they had like a pretty steep decline all the way to being dead. And they every single battery followed that pattern except for the Energizer Lithium. The Energizer Lithium had more of a like a long, even decline, and it just kind of like slowly goes down, whereas all the other ones just kind of like go like pretty steep down. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, so I guess that kind of like leads into the next question out of this, this entire video, which battery is the best? So <laughs> this is kind of a tough one. After seeing all of this and looking at all this data and everything, I would pick the best battery to be the Thunderbolt Edge. Kept up with the Energizer Max. It, they, were, they were both neck and neck throughout both tests, except for the, Ener the Thunderbolt Edge is 45 cents cheaper per battery than the Energizer Max. So I think that's a great value for what it is and for how long it lasts. And it even won the fan test, which was uh, seven hours and 47 minutes. You know, basically second tying the Energizer Max in the, the flashlight test. And these batteries are only and these batteries are only 38 cents a piece. So to come in second place, 38 cents a piece, and the only thing that really beat it is a battery that's 83 cents a piece or a battery that is $1.95 a piece. That's very impressive, and I think that's a lot of value for what you're for what you're paying for. Um, so I next time I get batteries. I'll be getting a Thunderbolt Edge batteries. That's the battery that I'm picking to win. I have presented you guys with hopefully more data than you could ever want, so you guys can come to your own conclusions and you guys can argue down in the comments about which battery you think is the best. Thank you guys so much for watching. If there's anything else that you want to see me test, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.